Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 26. Hey, we're using the Workbook Business Math Chapter 3. If you go to my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link. You can download this workbook. If you're enrolled in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we need to talk about part. Remember, we're studying percent formula rate times base equals part we're going to talk about how to solve for part and then in the next couple of videos we'll see about base rate and rate of change and other topics here's our example the pop advertising institute says that 55 percent of all supermarket sharpers have a written list of their needs if there are 3,680 shoppers entering the supermarket that you managed in one day, what number of shoppers would you expect to have a written shopping list? Hmm. Well, uh, we know which for formula we're going to use because uh, we're studying how to solve for part. But if you didn't, here's how you do it. Just step one, list the variable. So it looks like 55% of all, remember 55%, that's the rate of is multiplying all shoppers is the base, right? And then down here, uh, we have all, this will be our all shoppers for uh, a given day. Let's start with this, just reading straight through the problem. The, uh, num the percent of shoppers that have list equals, and I'll put right here, 55%. And I'm going to do format as I type, 55.00%. And I'm going to put rate here. That's the rate of all shoppers. So I'm going to say all shoppers, if only I could type. And I'm going to put a base here, because we know that's the base. Uh, and then down here it says if there are 3,600 shoppers entering the supermarket. So really all shoppers for us is going to be shoppers in one day. And then here we'll put uh, 3680. 3680. So we have two. One, two. The obvious uh, part left is apart, right? Because we have two of them and so we have to solve for the other one. And this is going to be number of shoppers that uh, have list in one day. And oh, that's a question mark. We don't know what that is. And what's the formula? Our, so our goal is to find um, number shoppers with list. And the formula we're going to use equals uh, part equals base times rate. So what we've done is we've gone through this problem. Zip, there it is. We've listed all our variables. Again, some people can do uh, some of this in their head or leave out some details. But if you always approach it this way, when you get to the hard ones, uh, you're more able to, to solve them. All right, set up and solve. We are going to solve for a uh, number of shoppers. And watch this. I'm gonna, since I want this label down here, watch this. I'm just going to go like that. That's a, uh, cell, a formula that says, hey, get whatever's up from that cell uh, B6. So we can just do our formula. We know it's equals and base times rate. Now, uh, what if I did it uh, rate times base? No difference, because multiplication is commutative. 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. All right, it looks like 2,024. Now, I'm going to check. Remember, we have a couple different ways of checking. We've already done our part equals uh, base times rate. So now we're going to try to solve for base. And we'll say uh, base equals associated part times asso uh, divided by associated rate. All right, let's try it. Here's our part divided by our rate. And we better then get this number right here. Oh, ding, 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 we do. Now let's uh, try this here, second check method. Now you don't need to always do both check methods, right? But um, if we always 
do both and by the time we're done studying this chapter we've had a lot of practice and we're fluent and plus if you can uh, check or solve for something in more than one way then you're more sure that you got the right answer so now we'll uh, solve for the rate and rate equals the part divided by the base equals oh yeah this part again remember we were this is the thing we just solved for so if we check it against this we better get the other one so this is going to be divided by the, um, this one, right? And better give us, so we're going to check it against this one and see if we get the 55, right? Uh-oh, wait, is 0.55 the same as 55%? Well, the number underneath is the same, but this is a formatted symbolic representation, whereas this is just the rate, the decimal. All right, now we can write our, wor our answer in words. Uh, since 55% of all shoppers have a list if 3,680 shoppers come in we would expect 2,024 shoppers to have a list all right, so that's looking pretty good right there. Uh, problem number one, let's do problem number two. If you invest, <clears throat> if you invest in a savings account that earns a monthly interest rate of a half of percent, oh, there's that fractional percent, right? But we know from studying earlier in this chapter, um, this half percent, since it's a half, it's got to be less than 1%. And we'll see a little trick that we learned earlier about how to get the actual decimal equivalent. A nice, easy, quick way. Okay, so we have monthly interest rate of a half a uh, percent. What is the interest that you earn for the first month? All right, well, we have um, this amount right here. And what is that going to be? Oh, well, that's going to be our base. So we'll say invested amount. I'm going to put 25,000. Hey, look, I typed a comma. When I control enter, that's formatting as you type. No way. That's the number that you that's uh, actually stored in the cell, but that was formatting as you type. Now, watch this. Notice we put invested amount. That's the actual name, specific name. Here we put the amount, but here I'm going to put base. Again, Lots of people, when they do this, I get the homework and the test and all that kind of stuff, uh, and they just they don't do both. But if you do it always this way, you will not only understand the problem more completely, how to do it, how to solve the hard ones, um, but it's easier to understand also. So we have the name, specific name, and then here's the general term for what this is. All right, next we have uh, monthly interest rate. And that's going to be, ah, and here, watch this. Uh, just as we did before, we have a half, right? But it, when we have a percent like this, if it's at 75%, we take 75 divided by 100. If it's at 1%, we take 1 divided by 100. But this says a half, so watch this. Equals 1 divided by 2 divided by 100. And that's a cool way to always get the decimal equivalent. Oh, uh-oh, I'm going to get rid of that format, right? That's the decimal equivalent. Looks like I pre-formatted this cell. I'm going to control one. Just to remind you, number, and I want to go to uh, custom. And we saw how to do this earlier in the type. Question mark, slash, question mark, and then a percent. Just like that. Boy, if you know that trick uh, at your work, uh, I bet you very few, if any, meaning probably zero other people know how to do a fractional percent format like that. Hey, uh, this is what? This is called the rate. Not rate, and rate, but rate. All right, and what are we solving for? We are solving for part. I'm going to put part right here. And what is it? Uh, what is the interest that you earn? Ah, so the specific name is interest earn. And that's a question mark, question mark. Hey, what's the formula we're going to use? Or our goal, find interest to earn. And the formula will be uh, base uh, part equals base times rate. 
All right, so now we can come down here. I'm going to do our same little trick before equals this. And then tab, because I'm going to come here and uh, solve for it, equals. And we have our base times our rate. Now, uh, we're really not going to ever use this in a subsequent calculation. This is uh, Our rule is if we're multiplying uh, decimals or dividing decimals, we should round. So we don't really need to round here. And don't worry about it. On the test, I'm very specific in the instructions. I, I tell you exactly when to round and when not to round. All right, so uh, let's check it. Check number one. And we're going to solve, in this case, for uh, base. So base equals the part divided by the rate. And so we'll say equals, oh yeah, this is our part divided by our rate. We better get that number right there. And sure enough, we do. All right, check number two. We're going to solve for the rate. And the rate equals the part divided by the base. Remember, uh, if you don't have these memorized by the time you do you know, 10 homework problems, just have the piece of paper there. Keep looking at it. By the time you get done with all the work, you will have it memorized. All right, so let's do it. Equals the part. Remember, here's the part. We're going to check it against this, this original piece of data, source uh, number, and we better get that. Oh, I mean, uh, we're going to check it against this one, and we better get that one. Ready? So divide it by this. I got my fingers crossed. Ah, 0 0.005. Wait a second, that's not the same. Oh, yeah, that's just a formatting difference. If you wanted to, Control-1, go down to Custom, and then, of course, you do Question Mark, as we did a million times in last chapter. And then, as we learned in this chapter, we can just slap a percent on our fractional formatting, and boom, it gives us that. All right, so we've checked tw twice. Now I'm going to uh, write this in words. If we invest. So there it is. I just typed really fast. We invest $25,000 for the month, and we earn a monthly interest rate of half a percent. We'll earn $125 for the month. So those are two examples of how to uh, solve for the part. When we come back, we will uh, learn how have two examples for solving the base. All right, see you next trick.